they just want to start by going back to to last weekend having already traveled down to colchester on the friday to to then learn of the the pitch inspection and then the uh, the postponement how, how disappointing was that from your perspective yeah, obviously really disappointing um, and, and I suppose frustrating and disappointing from a club perspective because you pay for uh, travel, you pay for accommodation. Um, again, there's, there's there's bits around Colchester and their circumstances with ground staff and stuff like that and, and I understand there's, they're going through a, a sort of change and that type of thing but um, <clears throat> the, to be, I suppose, informed as late as we were on Friday evening and then to see what the pitch was like on Saturday morning. That, that that game that game could have been called off on Friday morning. There's there's no way that game was going ahead and there's probably no way if they were playing at home this weekend that the game would go ahead with the state that the pitch was in um, and the amount of water that was in and around and, 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 on, and in the surface. So um, that's probably, the, the, like I say, the biggest frustration because there was no need for us to travel. There was no need for costs to be implicated. And I'm sure there'll be a discussion around who has to cover those costs and whatever else not, which didn't need to, to get involved. Um, and like I say, there are factors around that, but factors that could have been could have been dealt with. Um, and I suppose that makes it the more more disappointing. And the consequence, of course, is it's it's added to what's already a very congested end to the season for you now. I think you've got seven games to play in April. Um, I suppose on the on the flip side of that, you can flip it and say, well, by the time those games come around, you, you would hope to have some big players coming back from injury for those games. We would hope, of course we would, um, but it still doesn't take away from that. We would rather have, have played, the, played the game and, and, and played on a on a Saturday and got the, the game out the way after you've prepared for it and, and got down there. Um, but, like I say, we now have to deal with that and, and move on to this weekend's game and, and that game goes in further further down the line. You've had two weeks now with the players since your last game which is pretty unusual at this time of year. How have you used that time to prepare for what I suppose is, you can now view as, as the running? Yeah, you don't get the opportunity um, over the course of the season um, normally to be able to work certainly three sessions, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, um, in a way that you can concentrate on the things that you need to work on without looking too much at loading. Because normally a, a Monday will be a recovery session, there'll be a split group. Um, Tuesday then becomes a, a bigger uh, a bigger day. Um, and Thursday, you've got to taper things a little bit. We've had the luxury of being able to to look at what load we need and and manage that over over more days because it's increased. Um, so hopefully that, um, like I say, that, that, that pays off in terms of not just the short term, I suppose us evolving and getting better at the things we need to get better at um, and also with a focus on what, what Saturday looks like. I'm sure you've had one eye at least on, on the, the games and the results elsewhere in League 2 on Saturday and on Tuesday. Results that you, you could probably argue a lot have, have, have gone in your favour. When you look at the league table now and you, you look at where you are, the games in hand that you have, what do you make of the situation that you find yourself in heading into the final 12 games? Like I say, I, I, again, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm repeating myself and not sort of um, paying attention to what's there, but then there are things that are outside our control. I suppose with experience, you get um, to a situation where things or concentrating on things like that ultimately become a, a drain and an extra stress on, on a tough enough job as it, as it is. So we need to focus on us. Again, the amount of times over this week um, people have asked or have commented on the result on Tuesday night in terms of Mansfield and MK Dons and what that looked like. If you want to think and overthink what that result does and, and, and what it means, then crack on. I'm focused and I'm more worried about what happens between Stockport and Newport on, on Saturday and quickly then we'll move on to Salford on Thursday and Crawley on Monday and, and move further down the line. Our, our schedule, like I say, has changed due to TV, due to rearranged games and all them, all them bits. So we've got enough to, to focus on and concentrate on. <clears throat> we've got 12 games to go, um, 12 important games for us. Like you say, it is the, it is the running um, and there's a really congested... Um, Top of the top of the table, so it's a twelve-game season. I've said in my program notes, 
would we have taken this position at the start of the season? Absolutely, we would. So you've got to embrace that and you've got to thrive at it. Is there, is there pressure? Of course, there, of course there's pressure. Um, am I going to tell the supporters to enjoy it? Absolutely, I'm going to tell them to enjoy it. Understanding that it's not really enjoyable, is it? Let's be clear. You've got to sit and watch a, a game with jeopardy, with emotion, with frustration, with all them bits. But it's why we do it. We're in a position where we have the opportunity to be successful. Um, there are lots and lots of teams within not just the league, um, the whole country that don't have that position and they have more jeopardy with their futures in their particular leagues at stake. So we're in a great position, we're in a great spot, it's why we do it. Um, let's crack on. Elsewhere, I just want to ask about a couple of players that have, have gone out on loan this week, Cody to Scarborough, Jid uh, on loan to Hereford, both having good debuts by all accounts. So, uh, presumably those moves are all about minutes for those young lads now. Yeah, and I think in some instances, and I'll include Ashton, and Ashton's been, been ill and had a cough for, for a long time, um, we have to have an eye on us. The selfish thing would probably be meant to keep them in because we're a little bit low on numbers, but the reality is the best thing for them is to get out and, and play games and allow them to get that added experience of men's football over the back end of the, the season with the hope that they do well. Um, and can have a, an impact or they're closer than where they are currently to our first team squad um, for the start of, of next season. Um, so it'll give both of them the opportunity to get, I would hope, at least 10, um, 10 games at that level. Cody's done it before. G had a little spell at Chester. Now he's gone back out to, obviously, to, to Hereford, um, who are, again, in and around the, the playoff position. So some important games for them, not just... And not just games that are there's, there's meaning to those games and there's there's real um i suppose pressure to, to to pick up results which is which is good um and hopefully they sort of reap the rewards and benefits of that and ultimately if that's the case then, then we do further down the line in terms of team news i'm thinking specifically callum camps and akil Wright. Are, are either of them close to a return now uh, Campsy, yeah, I would uh, I can openly say I think Campsy will be involved this this weekend. Uh, Aki, no, Aki still, um, yeah, at least um, I'd say two or three weeks away. Um, we again will be in a situation where they'd be outside running, um, but we need to IKD him um, in probably the next two weeks, maybe two, maybe three weeks, to see where he's at. And if that comes back all, all clear, then we can we can push on with him, but. Um, until that point, uh, he won't be involved. Any other injury concerns since we last spoke? Um, no, a couple of little bits. The lads have, have, have missed the odd day this week, but everyone's been back out there out there today. Um, so, Crosby, first time back, back out um, doing his own little bits, and he's probably... A week or a week or so away, hopefully with no reaction from from today. Um, so we will get bodies back, um, but in terms of significant numbers of bodies, it's probably going to be more towards the start of April, I'd suggest, than um, than the, the middle or the end of March. So we we go with what we've we've got for this this current period. Newport were obviously the side that that brought an end to an, an incredible winning run back in November Saturday. Presumably a nice opportunity to, to flip that now and hopefully make it the, the start of another incredible winning run. Yeah, uh, it's not an opportunity to, to win a game at, at home. That's, that's what we need to do. We've not done that on our uh, last couple of couple of occasions. So um, that's where the, the, the opportunity lies. Um, but we, we know it's listen, we know it's a, a tough game. We know the strengths that they have. Um, they've been... Um, in decent form and had good results and had a really good FA Cup run, which again will will boost them in terms of the, in terms of the club and and then moving moving forward. So we know what we're coming up against. I think we need to, like I say, we need to focus on us. Um, we had a spell where we'd conceded goals, which cost us games. We've now got back to not conceding goals, but not scoring goals as well. Um, not for the want to try and not for the want to create an opportunity. So hopefully Saturday we can we can get that balance right. Um, and like I say, start this block of, of 12 games off with a with a victory. Um, and as you say, if that starts a winning run, that'll be a, a welcome place to be. Appreciate your time, Barry. Thank you. Welcome. Cheers. Thank you.